Welcome back to the News at 10. Residents of Nkata Ibeku in Umwahe, East local government area of Abia State, have cried out over the devastating effects of landslide and erosion that has claimed lives and is threatening their existence. According to them, they're suffering the mishap caused by negligence on the part of some contractors that worked on a federal road years ago but were inconsiderate to channel the whole drainage towards the area. They're calling on the state and federal government to intervene quickly before the rains stop their area, before the rains to stop their area from being washed away. Mukata Ibeku, a semi-urban settlement in Umuahia East, Abia State, with a population of over 3,000. The inhabitants are mostly civil servants. With the serene environment, residents rely on cultivating staple food crops in their farms within their compound and cherish the communal lifestyle. But this is about to change now because of the threat of landslide and erosion. The suburban community now live in fear because of the anticipating damage any rainfall may bring to the area. Some of them have no option but to restructure their houses to avoid it from collapsing. The government just ignored us. They ignored us. If you go to my, the back of my investment, you see I have spent money to protect this little house I put there. You see. And many other things. Everybody is suffering. Nobody passes here. Even the, we have policemen and other uh, civil servants living here. Nobody passes around here when the rain uh, falls. And in fact, if you come here to watch when the heavy rainfalls and how the, the weight of the flood, you just pity everybody who is living here. Some residents can only access their homes through a makeshift bridge because erosion has made some areas impassable for cars. As we are now, we have no option except to plead for the federal government to come to our rescue. If you leave this thing in the next running season, you will see that there's no car. Just look at here. It's our management. We have been doing it every cleanup day or every week to see that our car can park in or people can walk through this community. We can only plead for federal government to see how they can assist us because when you look at this bridge here, it's not a bridge that uh, a, a state or maybe a village can do. So we are pleading the federal government also to help to make sure that we can be able to rescue the life of our people because it has taken us time. The state government is aware of their plight and has promised to look into the problem. I want to assure you that before the rain is, if nothing is done in terms of comprehensive work this season, before the next season, I can assure you that everything that needs to be done would have been done. Relevant authorities in charge of road construction will do well by properly studying the environmental impact assessment of areas before embarking on any work in the future to avoid the spate of erosion. And it's time now for sports news. Here's Charles Aruka. Thanks a lot, Amarachi. Welcome to Sports News. We'll begin with table tennis. European superpowers Portugal, Russia and Hungary, as well as African giants Egypt, along with 11 other countries, have confirmed their participation in this year's ITTF Nigeria Open that will hold in Lagos. Organizers have confirmed entries from Finland, Slovakia, Romania, Iran, Mexico, Ghana, Congo, Brazzaville, Morocco, Tunisia, Congo, DRC and Cameroon. Nigerians dominated the entry, led by the country's top players Edem Ofiong and Funke Oshonaike. Other big names in the world of tennis include Hungary's Zandra Pergel and Portugal's Jenny Shao. In the men's singles, Aruna Quadri will be up against top players from Europe in a tournament that begins, only on, that begins on May the 18th through the 22nd. In football, Leicester City has completed one of the most remarkable triumphs in sporting history by winning the 2015-2016 Premier League title. Tottenham's 2-2 draw at Chelsea confirmed a stunning achievement for Claudio Ranieri's side. 
Leicester started the campaign as 5,000 to 1 outsiders for the title after almost being relegated last season. Closest challengers, Spurs, Arsenal, Manchester City, Manchester United and last year's champions Chelsea have all failed to match the Foxes' consistency across the season. Leicester have lost just three league games in what's been described as a fairy tale and the most unlikely triumph in the history of team sport. Meanwhile, Super Eagles forward Kelechi Hanacho says it will be a dream to play for Manchester City in the Bernabeu and hopes to take his hot Premier League goal-scoring form into the Champions League showdown. The 19-year-old striker staked his claim for a starting place against Real Madrid on Wednesday night with two goals in City's 4-2 loss at Southampton on Sunday. With David Silva on the sidelines, coach Manuel Pellegrini will need the 19-year-old striker, who now has 13 goals this season, to be firing on all cylinders, with a tie delicately poised at nil-nil after the first leg. And in tennis, former world number one Roger Federer has pulled out of this week's Madrid Open with a back injury. The Swiss great travelled to the Spanish capital for the tournament but was unable to practice and announced his withdrawal earlier today. The 17-time Grand Slam champion hopes to be back for the Rome Masters next week. And world number five Rafael Nadal is hoping to continue his perfect form as he arrives in Spain ahead of the Madrid Masters. The Spaniard is coming off two straight titles. Another win at his home, Masters will feature all top ten players and would re-establish him as a leading contender heading into Roland Garros, which starts May the 16th. World number one Novak Djokovic and number two Andy Murray also spoke on their expectations in Madrid. Uh, the victory is obviously you know, I'm especially happy for, for the way that I won. Uh, I think I played um, at a good level and uh, mentally have been strong again, so just happy the way that, that I am practicing again. So. Just very, very, very excited to play Madrid now this week. Winning against some some of the top players in the world on on the clay gave me a lot of confidence and and belief on this surface, which I didn't really have before. I was kind of always going into clay court seasons a little bit unsure about how I might do and not that confident in, in myself. But you know, here last year really helped that. Um, and yeah, hope I can have another good performance this year. Yeah, he's been, he's been playing terrific tennis uh, in Monte Carlo and Barcelona, undoubtedly. Um, and this is his most preferred surface, and he has won so many <laughs> clay court titles in his life um, that um, you know you have to always consider him one of the top favorites. Well, from the tennis court to the boxing ring now, world heavyweight champion Tyson Fury says he is 100% sure he'll retire after his match with Vladimir Klitschko. Fury defeated Klitschko by a unanimous points decision in Dusseldorf last November to claim the WBA, IBF, which he was later stripped of, and WBO heavyweight titles. Klitschko subsequently activated a rematch clause in his contract and the duo will meet again in Manchester on July the 9th. However, the 27-year-old announced on social media that his next fight will be his last. Depending on whether he wins or loses. But that's it on Sports News and it's back to Amarachi with the rest of the news at 10. The owner of the story building that collapsed in Nairobi, Kenya, Samuel Karanja Kamau, has been arrested and will appear in court tomorrow. Nairobi's Governor Evans Kidera says as soon as they are, they are identified, the officials who approved the construction of the building in the neighborhood would be sacked. And that's because the government is saying there was no permission granted to rent out 119 rooms in the six-story building. Meanwhile, rescuers have been working round the clock to bring as many people out of the rubble, say they're not certain there could be any more survivors from the disaster. The death toll is presumed to 21. Police have been questioning the owner of the building. Critics of the government of President Uhuru Kenyatta say the building was set up because of corruption, which is rampant in the country. Estate developers, they say, usually violate construction codes to minimize costs with little or no penalties from the government. On, it, on entertainment news tonight, Afro soul singer Asha stages her second live concert in Lagos. The internationally recognized artist performed for two hours non-stop. Mayowa Ogundele has the details. 
Many thanks. Here are your top trending stories. Praises continue to flood in for Afro soul singer Asha, following a stellar performance at the second concert in Lagos, which held over the weekend and was well attended by celebrities and music lovers. Asha, who performed for two hours non-stop, opened a set with the song Away and also delivered a special rendition of Beyonce's song Halo alongside renowned producer Kobam Zasukwo, all well received by guests. Other artists who performed at the event were MOBO award-winning singer Rachel Kerr, Isaac Gerald, Falano, and Kalini. Lagos turned into a jazz hub in celebration of the International Jazz Day, with different international and domestic artists, including American group Satchmo Band, Grammy award-winning act Kirk Willem, member of the Jackson 5, Jermaine Jackson, Yinka Davies, Lagbaja, and several others thrilling guests at different events, Runway Jazz, the Satchmo Jazz Festival, and another tagged an evening of jazz. In light of the recent scandal involving pop singer Tiwa Savage and husband T-Bills, alternative singer Bez is appealing to fans as well as the general public to be sensitive to the humanity of celebrities. The That Stupid Song crooner says expecting celebrities to be faultless is not to be encouraged as they are not gods. The appeal is coming a day after popular singer Tubaba registered his displeasure with jokes made about Tiwa Savage's marriage crisis. The singer who was indicted in allegations of infidelity by Savage's husband T-Bills last Thursday took to his Instagram to caution social media users against making jokes of what he terms a heartbreaking predicament. And finally, Adekunle Gold confirms that Olamide-led YBNL has signed its first female act. The singer, who chose not to reveal the identity of the artist, said the newbie is a soul singer. Well, that's it from me. Many thanks for watching. Let's head back to the main news. And the main news again. Nigerian military today offered assurances of releasing captives of the Boko Haram terrorists as it takes on the insurgents at Sambisa Forest. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Abayomi Olonishaking, explained that a major clearance operation is presently going on in the forest. Nigerians are being enjoined to start a tree planting revolution towards achieving a green economy in the face of global climate change. This emerged at the Environment Summit in honor of the wife of the Ogun State Governor, Olufunsho Amosung, who turned 50. And Cameroonian President Paul Bia is expected to arrive in Nigeria tomorrow for a state visit. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.